everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating in my studio. Every day I share a video with you on YouTube in which I paint and create all sorts of nature inspired pictures. I also share loads of tips on how to make the most of your painting journey, interrupted fairly frequently by our family of dogs, cats, chickens and sheep. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. Hi everyone and welcome to my studio. Today we're going to um, do a line and wash or a pen and ink and watercolour wash um, drawing and uh, painting of two little harvest mice on a, a couple of ears of corn. I don't know if it's wheat or barley or oats or whatever, but it isn't maize. Anyway, so yes, and uh, with a couple of poppies. And I've just done a quick sketch here just to plan out my composition. Um, I did make a couple of alterations as I went along and I'm not completely happy with the fact that both the mice are facing the same way, but I tried it out with them facing inwards. I don't know if you can see that. And um, in the end I thought, no, I, I think I prefer that. So we're gonna go with that. <clears throat> of course, you can um, alter it however you like when you come to do your version of this. So um, having decided on my composition, I'll put that aside for a sec. And I've tried out my pen here on in my sketch pad and I'm thinking I'll probably start with a, a 0 0.05 millimeter nib on the pigment liner um, because that's quite light and if I need to go over it I'll be able to and make alterations if I need to and in any case uh, really the watercolor is going to be the main feature so we don't need to make the lines too heavy in this particular painting but I have got the other ones here if I need them. And uh, I recommend these ones, the Stettler pigment liners, because they are completely waterproof and they're light fast and you can paint over them and they won't run. Um, so it's worth, I mean, these are really, really inexpensive. It's less than, I mean, I'm in Europe and it cost me, I think eight euros for six of them. So, I mean, you can't argue with that really, or at least you would have to try very hard to find something to argue about there. Um, I'm going to use my number seven round nylon brush with a lovely point. If you haven't got one with a nice point, try and get one. Pro Art are good, or I order mine from Japan and I get them at a very good price and you can too. So look in the description below and you'll find information on how to contact them. I don't get any commission on that. It's just handy for you to have that source if you if you want to pursue that. So I'm going to be using four colors today for this painting and that's all. Um, even though you might think that I would need 16 shades of brown to paint a mouse, I don't. Um, not the way I do it anyway, which, uh, <coughs> excuse me, is I'm going to be using quinacridone gold, permanent rose, cobalt blue and potter's pink. And um, from those four colors, I can mix pretty much whatever I want to make my particular personal rendition of this. So I'm going to mix the colors for the mouse from Potter's Pink, Quinacridone Gold, and oh, I forgot one, I forgot one. Sorry, Windsor Violet. What did I do with that? Five colors, Windsor Violet, that's gonna give me my shadows. So for the mouse, we're going to use Potter's Pink and Quinacridone Gold to give a nice soft brown. Some of him is going to be more pinkish, like his hands and things and inside his ears and his tail. And then when I want to make a shadow color, I just add a little bit of Windsor Violet to that, which gives me a darker, and that can obviously be made darker still. So that's, that's that. And then here for the corn, Quinacridone Gold is going to be the basis for the ear of corn and we'll darken that down with um, cobalt blue. That will be the shadow color for that. And it doesn't go terribly green, especially if you add a little bit of Potter's pink. You can also obviously add some Windsor Violet to that to give a slightly more, you can, all of these harmonize. Um, and the poppy is going to be quite subtle because I'm going to use permanent rose mixed with canacridone gold. And that's going to give me this nice soft orangey red color. 
So it's going to be quite subtle colours. Oh, and the green of the leaves of the poppy are going to be Windsor Violet, Quinacridone Gold, and Quinacridone Gold and Cobalt Blue. That's where the Cobalt Blue comes in. So I have um, sketched the mice and very lightly sketched in the um, flowers and things behind. Um, and I'm going to now go over that with my um, pen and um, then we will paint it. And um, yeah, let's see how that goes. It's a very, very hot day here today. And um, so if I suddenly start sounding like uh, I'm talking gibberish, uh, don't take any notice, it's just the heat. Um, right, let's get started. Okay. I've got my little empty dishes there for, for mixing. Sometimes when um, you are painting a line and wash, you might want to leave some elements of it in pencil and some then do some elements in pen that gives uh, quite a bit of interest to the painting so i might do that i might do that so i'm just putting in some stems and um, i'm going to keep the poppies fairly simple and uh, I'm just going to scribble in the centers with a little bit of a little bit of pen here, varying the darkness, and then I'm going to outline the petals. I'm going to do this really uh, lightly. And when when we paint over that. Um, you can put in some shadow to give it more form. And I don't know if I want a, a leaf coming up here yet. We might, I'm not sure. Um, and so this mouse is clinging on for dear life to a stalk. And I've got his tail twining around the stalk of the ear of corn. If you want, um, if you uh, don't like drawing and you want to download my sketches, you can do that on dinanton.com. We've got them there for you. Uh, you don't have to pay for them, but we have just yesterday, and I hope nobody's offended by this, but um, we have just set up what they call a tip jar, which um, is um, run courtesy of uh, PayPal, so you can trust it. And what that is, is um, it's a way that if you feel you would like to contribute something to the running of the channel, you can. You can just make a, a payment um, via PayPal of a dollar or two if, um, if, you, if you want to. You don't have to. They're still free. But it does cost us, we don't, I don't make any money from this really, not to speak of. I'm doing it for love and the pandemic. And although I have a lot of equipment and a lot of supplies, it will all start to run out soon. I'm going to have to keep buying more paint. So I just thought, someone suggested it, one of you lovely ladies suggested it might be a good idea and that people might actually like um, to be given the opportunity <clears throat> to basically show their appreciation for what we're doing, me and my daughter. But it's entirely up to you. There's no obligation at all. I don't really want to go the Patreon route or anything like that. It's 
I'm a bit of an anarchist and I don't like people telling me what to do or think and so I don't want to really tell anyone else what to do and what to think so, you know. You can't help but um, wonder about the rules and regulations we live by. Um, okay, so, whoops, brush out of the way. <clears throat> Let's get this poppy in place. I'm working on a piece of 90 pound paper here and it's been stretched so it won't buckle. Um, I've been using the Etcher sketchbook, the Etcher sketch, the last couple of days and that paper is lovely. It's really um, excellent watercolour paper. I think as far as I can find out from searching online, it's Chinese, the paper. I presume that's true. If anyone knows better, I know that Etcher are not Chinese, but um, I, I believe the paper is made by Bao, Bao Hang, and it's very good. I like it better than Arches myself. And what I was saying was that, um, but it um, isn't necessary to use 140 pound paper if you're doing something like this, which is pen and ink. You don't, you don't need that. You can use sketching paper if you want. And this is pastel paper. This is laid. It's got a. a um, Oh, 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 parallel lines, lots of parallel lines all over it. It's actually meant for pastel. Okay, so we've got one, two, three and a half poppies. I haven't put in any poppy leaves, but we probably should. They are, um, they tend to be um, like this. You know, when you start to do a painting every day, I've been doing this every day for seven months now, and I never used to paint this regularly at all until COVID, <clears throat> which I think I had. I think I did, but I think I had it before everybody else. I think I might have had a, a forerunner because two and a half years ago, um, the, the spring before it hit, hit, the spring before it hit in um, China, well, I'll tell you, my, my son, who is a teacher, works in a school that has a lot of Chinese students. And that Christmas, he came, the Christmas before the pandemic hit, he came to visit me for Christmas and he brought his son with him. And the minute his son walked through the door, I said to James, Joe's sick. Can you keep him away from me, please? Because I don't do really very well when I get the flu and I think he's really sick. And my son, being the know-all that he is, said, there's nothing wrong with him, he's just tired. And I said, he doesn't look tired to me. Anyway, so the top and bottom of it was, I came down with a flu, which uh, kept me in bed for a week, which never happens, I never. 
because I tend to keep myself away from people. I'm very antisocial because I don't like having a flu. Um, anyway, so I got it. And when I started to recover, I realized I couldn't breathe. And ever since then, I've always been a bit asthmatic, but ever since then, I've had to be on inhalants, um, steroids or various different things. And my lungs, which were never the best, uh, are now significantly worse. So, draw your own <coughs> inferences from that. I'm going to leave the mice like that because I'm afraid I'm going to mess them up if I go over them in ink. So I'm going to stop inking now and start thinking. Very funny. Um, pencil lines need to be rubbed out. Not the mice, but the other ones because they are now superfluous. Some hairs in it. This mop brush, I use it more for getting rid of the rubbings out bits than I do for painting. Okay, so at this point, you look at it and you think to yourself, um, is that okay? Is that what I wanted? And um, you could always make alterations with the mice. You might want to add something else to it, but I'm going to leave it like that because that seems to me to be fine. Okay. So. I'm not going to do a background on this one, uh, but I almost certainly will do some spatter at the end. And I think I'll probably start with the poppies and the reason for that is they're going to be the strongest colour in this painting aren't they because they're going to be on the red side and uh, so then the rest of the um, the tones will need to um, be subordinate slightly to the poppy so I need a piece of paper there to test my colour and um, what I tend to like to do is I'll drop in one colour and then let it dry and then um, come back afterwards with any alterations I need to make. So what I'm doing here is um, putting in some fairly light red and then just coming in with some slightly darker and dropping it into the centre, like that. And that will bleed out, well not bleed out, it's not going to die, but that will merge. So we'll see how that goes. And then do the same down here. Um, painting pen and ink is it's like colouring in, isn't it? It's nice. Just watching the pigment bleeding. And it will spread almost completely, but it's still fun to do. And then when it's nearly dry, you can come in and do it again. do your poppies all slightly different colours that will look nicer when it's finished so that one is different from that one and this one is uh, less less quinacridone in there 
so it's bluer. So we put some nice dark in there. And then I think this one on the right here will make this one a bit more yellowish. just um, letting the back petals here softening up that edge so that they can bleed out a little bit because they're further away so you want them to be a little bit more faint or I don't know what's the word out of focus that's it um, and I'm going to now put the first coat on the mice. So I'm mixing up a sort of golden brown with quinacridone and potter's pink. The potter's pink because it's a granulating colour and quinacridone isn't. So we just put that in to start with and we will um, add some shadows later when it's dry. Bud, and I like to do these, I just like to paint them like this. I don't know if it's got anything to do with reality, I don't care. And some blue with some quinacridone to make a kind of green. Dark, dark green, and then. And we can use the same color over here the seed head and then make it a little bit more golden as it comes down and then pick up some more blue for the leaves If you paint some of the stems in quinacridone first and then drop in some blue, you can get a nice kind of three-dimensional effect. I'm not going to paint all of the, the leaf because I like the pen. So, Now I'm going to just put a wash of golden colour over there, like that. And we'll bring the golden colour down for the stem. That one's this one here as well, so that can go up. 
And then again, just a wash. I can paint every single gosh darn seed head, seed rather. When that's dry, I'll put a little bit more shadow in. got these nice um, dry leaves of the corn so we'll just do that and a little bit of shadow underneath don't need to do much with green for this poppy stem cream cobalt blue quinacridone gold A soft green. of the mouse. And I'm going to pick up some Windsor Violet and some... Yeah, some Windsor Violet. And I'm going to hope that that's dark enough. To darken the centres. I don't want to use black. Okay, I'm going to let that dry at this point in time and see where we're at. Okay, so it's more or less dry now, so I'm going to introduce a little bit more red um, into the poppies. And you can obviously go into more detail with this than I am if you want but this is just a demonstration just an idea we've got lots of other poppy tutorials as well if you want to um, paint a transparent poppy or a very very loose poppy we'll put links um, so you can find find them in the channel. So that will probably do. Don't want to put too much. Um, now the mice just need a little bit of finishing off there, don't they? So we'll just put a little tiny bit of pink in there and on the inside of his ears. 
this one too, his feet, and um, the seed that he's eating is presumably one of these, so that's going to have to be a golden colour like that. And um, we can put a bit more colour into the grass, uh, the, the dead, they're uh, dead aren't they, they're dying back. a tiny bit of shadowy beige on the mouse, maybe underneath his chin, maybe here, behind his ear, top of the head, and then we'll just soften that. And with my fine pen, we'll put some whiskers in there. They don't really show with pencil, so we'll just do that really lightly. Essence of Mouse. Getting close to being finished. Um, I'm going to put a little bit of spatter at the top here. Uh, I was thinking blue, but I've changed my mind. I'm going to go for a brownish colour, so Potter's pink. Let me just test it. So So you've got a couple of options at this point. You can leave it and call it done. And if you're just doing a um, quick greetings card or a quick sketch, that would obviously be sensible. You can come in again with the pen and put in a few more lines around the stems, for example, some, some nice shaky lines and maybe a few hairs because I think often Poppies have hairy leaves, or uh, stems, and um, you can play around like that. You could put more shadow <coughs> on the leaves, for example. Here, you might think that's not dark enough. Um, so anyway, you get the idea, and I think that's enough from me for one day. And uh, so I'm going to leave you with that and enjoy it. Um, if you... Uh, Want to download the sketch i haven't done it yet but i will trace it and you'll be able to download that for free from the website don't forget the tip jar if you feel like making a small contribution but totally op optional um, and click like make a comment ask any questions you have i'm always there i answer each and every question just give me a day or two especially in this heat so I'll say bye-bye for now, and I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.